Welcome back to Roots Music History. On this podcast, we talk about the stories behind songs and legends, as well as moments in history and history in the making. On today's episode, I am so excited to share with you the story of a man named John Wines. John Wines is a 60-year-old living in the UK, and he became an overnight rock and roll sensation when he took the stage of America's Got Talent and absolutely blew away not only the judges, but everyone watching as well. On May 30th, 2023, season 18 of America's Got Talent would kick off. The season would only last for approximately four months, but a very unsuspecting act would have a lasting impression, not only on the judges and the viewers, but on guitarists everywhere. You probably recognize John Wines from this America's Got Talent moment. You may also follow him on social media. He has over a million followers on TikTok and Instagram. He also has a Facebook and a YouTube, but there is so much more to the man behind the music. And I had the honor of sitting down with John to dig up his roots. John was a Christmas baby and was born in December of 1963 in the United Kingdom in Poole. His parents were not musical at all, but he says that his grandparents were, and he wonders if that musical gene just skipped a generation. At one point as a kid, John got a very cheap steel string acoustic guitar. John loved this guitar and practiced it quite often. In fact, he was so proud of it, he decided to take it to school one day to show his teacher and his peers. Well, I had a guitar as a kid, because I always wanted one and pestered my parents. Nowadays, it's hard to buy a bad guitar. In them days, it was hard to buy a good guitar for very little money. And I had this, uh, they give me this acoustic, which, you know, the action on the strings was, you know, you could drive a bus under. So I, you know, and I remember taking it to school and the, the teacher there saying, oh, this is unplayable. So I never took it up, you know, I, and I was a kid anyway, so whatever. But then I shared a flat with a couple of mates when I was 18 and they played. And it's like, well, yeah, just show us what to do, then I'll have a go. John describes music as just kind of falling into his lap. It wasn't really something he went out to pursue. I fell into it. I fell into playing. I fell into teaching. I fell into everything. <laughs> In John's early 20s, he kept playing and even joined up with a few local bands to play some live gigs. He never had any formal training and he didn't understand music theory, but he knew how to play and he taught himself what he could based on the people around him and the resources available to him at that time. And you really cannot knock that because some of the greatest guitarists in the world were all self-taught, did not have that technical side, did not understand music theory, and a lot of them couldn't even read sheet music, but John always knew in the back of his head that there was this entire technical side to things that he wanted to learn. And John was a very technical person. John started out working with his father as an electrician, but he was never the head of the company. He was always just an employee. He actually says he enjoyed being an employee and not having the entire company on his shoulders. He says he, quote, liked to be under the radar a little bit. So throughout John's 20s, he was playing live gigs with some some of his friends and was also an electrician full time. When John was about 28 years old, he decided to start volunteering at a youth service. Probably since 92, I got involved with the youth service, helping kids out with music projects. And we used to run these weekend events where we would get 50, 60 kids come in. Some would already be in bands, but most wouldn't. So then we put them in bands, tutor them for the whole weekend on everything from electrical safety to stagecraft to how they're going to play this song and what have you. And then they would do a gig on the Sunday night to their friends and family, which was brilliant, really tough work, but or hard work, but so rewarding. It was fantastic. When John was 28 and started volunteering here, like I said, he did not have any technical knowledge, but he did have hands-on experience because he had been playing with his friends in local pubs for several years at that point in time. We had to bring in other tutors because I wasn't, although I did a bit of teaching for the youth service and for friends or whatever, it wasn't what I call proper teaching because I actually didn't even know what I was doing then. I could play, but I I knew no theory or nothing because I'd learned the wrong way, if you like. One of the biggest requirements for having this youth getaway every weekend was having tutors and teachers available on these given weekends. So you would see sometimes people cycle in and out and they would rope in various tutors and teachers from around the area to come and volunteer and help out. John seemed to be one of the constants, one of the folks who was there most weekends. And even though he lacked the technical knowledge, he absolutely 
absolutely loved being with the youth and teaching the next generation the craft of the guitar. About three years into volunteering with the youth service, John decided he needed to get out there on the dating scene. He was now 31 years old and had a steady job as an electrician. He also was giving back to his community, volunteering with the youth service. He seemed to have everything in order and the only missing puzzle piece was that special someone. So one night, John decided to attend a singles mixer. And that is where he met Julie. I think we met in 96, I think, so 95, 96, I think it was. Yeah, which was um, a singles evening. Julie and John immediately hit it off. And as they say, the rest was history. Yeah, and we've been together. Well, yeah, what's that? 28 years now, I suppose we've been together. We've been married since 2004. So uh, yeah, we've been married 20 years in April. Yeah, next month. Mustn't forget that. Right. <laughs> I haven't yet. So <laughs> we actually got married in Vegas because we, we'd we been there and we liked it. Neither of us are, like I say, we both like to stay under the, the, the radar. We don't like a lot of fuss. So it was just like, do we really want to get married here and then have to have this person because you've got that person? Well, no. What are we going to do? I'll tell you what. Let's just tell everybody. We'll book a date. We're going to get married here. If you want to come, brilliant. If you don't want to come, it doesn't matter. It's fine. So it ended up 20 turbos went, uh, including her mother, who was 70 or just over 70 at the time, and she'd never flown before in her life. A 10 and a half hour flight <laughs> was her first flight, which is not really what you really want, but she was absolutely great. She was yeah, fantastic. I think she kind of quite enjoyed it, you know, showed her a bit of the world. During their engagement, they would face their very first speed bump together. The company John was working for as an electrician was going to close down, and John would be without a job. John knew that his livelihood depended on this paycheck. And not only were he and Julie planning a wedding during this time, they were also buying their first house and trying to build a home and nest in their home, which as you know, anyone who has bought a house or even just moved locations. There's so many little expenses you don't even think about, like the hooks for the walls or baskets for the new closet that you didn't have before. There's so much that goes into it in addition to a down payment. I think his exact words were it was a very, quote, manic time. And John was very uneasy, not knowing where he was going to be working. And he also knew he had a very short period of time to find work. And then while all of this was happening... Divine music intervention struck. We were on a Sunday and I pulled in this guitar tutor who I knew, kind of knew, um, because he was playing on the same circuit, obviously, that we were, uh, a guy called Tim Wedlake. I'd been made redundant that week. And it was just over lunch, he was saying, well, what are you going to do? I said, well, I'll get another job, to be honest with you. I've had a couple of people sort of, you know, um, inquiring and what have you. So I just did that. He said, well, have you ever thought about going into teaching? And I said, no. (laughs) Like, are you sure? And I said, no, because, like, I don't know any of the nuts and bolts. I don't know any theory. He said, well, look, I'll help you. But what I've seen you doing over the weekend, I think you should be doing this. Right, okay. So then I'm thinking, well, blimey, I'd love to do it, obviously. You know, that would be like a a dream job to me. So then I went home and I spoke to the wife and we literally just moved house. We were just about to get married. Well, yeah, she wasn't my wife at the time. So all these things, and I'm saying, look, He's, Tim says this, blah, blah, blah. And she said, well, you haven't got another job, so why don't you give it a go? If not, if it doesn't work out, then whatever. You know, you go and get another job. And luckily, I got a private practice up together very quickly. One school, which then led to another. And then, another. well, I started for the youth service. And so one thing led to another. Within a couple of years, you know, I, I was working full-time, over full-time. It was just a chance comment, if you like. Like, you know, the planets aligned or whatever. I don't know. <laughs> so with that, John decided to put all of his eggs into a teaching basket. One thing I notice when watching John and talking with John is he is extremely smart. He's very humble, uh, but he's also very smart. And he's got a lot of business savvy to him. It was almost like he was born to do this. And it was always inside of him, but he never knew it. In a very short period of time, John was fully booked. Tim Wedlake became 
such a mentor in John's life. Tim taught John music theory. Tim taught John the technical side of things. And not only did Tim teach him these concepts, but he taught them in a way that was very easy for John to understand and very easy for him to pick up. You know, you have teachers who will teach things and overcomplicate things and you really genuinely wonder, does this person actually want me to learn this material? Because they're making it so much harder than it needs to be. But that was not the case with Tim's mentorship. Tim was genuinely there to lift up John and to help John and to make it as easy and as comprehensive as possible. I learned the wrong way. I mean, it was the, of its time. Most people did. And I'm not saying it was a bad thing, but I've also learned the proper way. And mainly thanks to Tim. And he, he, honestly, that guy changed my life. By the way, I have mugs that say Divine Music Intervention on them for sale. If you would like a Divine Music Intervention mug, the link is in the description down below. Now, this whole encounter with Tim Wedlake happened around 2004. For the next 16 years, John and Julie would live happily together in the UK while Julie worked in healthcare and John continued teaching music. Then in the fall of 2021, John could not ignore the fact that all of his students would not stop talking about this new app called TikTok. TikTok, as you well know, came onto the scene during the lockdowns in 2020. Everyone was flocking to it. And by the end of 2021, the app had gained so much traction and popularity. The app had proven to everyone that it was here to stay. This was not just a lockdown phase. So curious about what this app was and what was happening on the platform, John decided one night to make himself a profile. He gave himself the handle John Wines. Obviously, everyone's on Facebook and there's sort of pages on there like Stratocaster pages and Telecaster pages, you know, certain types of guitars. I Every now and then, you know, just film myself doing a bit of improvisation and put it on there. Then suddenly there's this thing called TikTok that's on my phone or whatever. I thought, well, that's videos. So I thought, all right, well, I joined it and I joined it under my name to start with. And I've forgotten about this until a while ago. I was at one of the schools I was at and I think my laptop was open and I think one of the kids saw that there was the TikTok app. He said, oh, you on TikTok? And I thought, oh, I don't really want the kids to, to, to know because you've got to be really careful, especially when you're in education. You know, we're always taught, uh, always told, sorry, you know, your Facebook must be private, blah, 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 which is absolutely fine. You know, don't be friend the kids, which I wouldn't anyway. So I thought, well, I changed my name. Well, what am I going to change it to? So, um, and I don't know, I just went, well, I'm old, I'm gray, I'm a guitarist. I don't do. So it was literally that. Turns out it was one of the best things I ever did, but it was completely by accident. The very first video John ever posted was on November 12th, 2021, and it was a mashup of Gary Moore and Van Halen. Can you pick a better first video? I really, I don't think so. John did not post for a few months following that very first video. His next video wasn't posted until February 5th, 2022, and the title of that video was, quote, Just Goofing Around. Again, it was a couple months in between videos before John posted another video of him in his studio titled A Little Light Noodling.
continue to post periodically the first half of 2022. And then in July of 2022, he thought he would start posting lessons. He posted a few lessons between July and September, but it wasn't until September 12, 2022, when John posted a Queen cover that his channel absolutely took off. And John started thinking to himself, you know, maybe this is what people want to hear. So he started posting more and more covers. Another video that really catapulted his channel was his cover of Hotel California. Now, those of you in the music industry may or may not know this, but Don Henley is very strict. The Eagles in general are very, 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 very strict about not using their music. Rick Beato has a really great video where he talks about the Eagles and a few others. I think it's ACDC might be one. Maybe it's not ACDC, but I'll link Rick Beato's video in the description down below where he talks about different artists and their copyright mentality. But John unknowingly walked into the ring of fire, the ring of Eagles fire. Yes. Yes, um, our good friend, Mr. Henley. Mr. Henley doesn't like people covering his songs um, whatsoever, and he has issued me, um, which is what I've had to delete everything I've ever done from the Eagles because I had copyright strikes. No warnings, just like, bang, bang, what's going on? I didn't even know what the problem was. In actual fact... I remember when I first went viral, I actually got hold of the Musicians Union, which I'm a member of. And I said, look, am I doing anything illegal here? Because I'm covering other people's work, blah, blah, blah. And he said, no, there's laws in place that protect you. You're OK. They said the worst you could ever get is someone saying uh, a cease and desist order. All right, because great, because I don't want to get sued. You know, and if I'm going to get sued, I'm just going to stop it straight away. Because I'm, I'm, listen, I'm a normal working guy. I ain't got nothing. But I don't think anyone had really planned on him. Oh, blimey. I think he's got a team of people that are looking for anyone that's even just played one note of their songs and he will issue copyright strikes. Yeah, and then you've got other people, like he's living in Nashville now. It's Joe Bonamassa, isn't it? You know, Joe, who is one of the... And I've met Joe many, many times. One of my students got to play with him at a gig. I had an incredibly small part in him coming to the UK in the first place, only because a friend of mine owned Mr. Kipps, where he, and, and I went in there one day, and Kipps said, Johnny Boy, he said, Joe Bonamassa, and Kip, bless him, knows nothing about music. By his own admission, he doesn't, all right? And I said, book him, just book him. And I thought he already had, um, if I'm honest. I'm sure he said he had, but it doesn't matter. Um and, and and so, you know, that's how Joe come across in, in the first place um, because Kip, Kip, you know, took a chance on him. And he's great, Joe. He does a lot for the kids as well. You know, he really does. And um, a phenomenal player. What can you say about his playing? Crikey. Um, but he's just a genuinely nice guy. Now, he says, please come to my concerts. Please cover my stuff. Please video me. Please put it on YouTube because it gets my name out there. And he's absolutely right. And I don't know why, but just one day I thought, well, I, I did, that's right, I did All Right Now by Free, which is one of my favourite solos. It's, uh, to me, one of the most perfect solos ever. It's not the most complicated, but it's just so melodic. It just works perfectly. And I put that out, and literally in a few days, that had probably done many, many times more views than anything else I before and I thought oh all right then plus that's what people really want to see so I did that I came down I recorded it well I was just having me tea and I thought oh you know what else can I do and I thought ah Bohemian Rhapsody everybody loves that right I'll tell you what I'll stick that out tonight so I came back down the studio a couple of takes and I'd done it put it out and, and I always remember and I don't know why sometimes I think you remember things for a reason and, and I don't know why I remember it but like after, I don't know, a few hours, it had done 224 views. And I thought, oh, well, I got that wrong then, didn't I? OK. I think by the time I'd gone to bed, it was 1,500. But then I woke up in the morning and it was like over 200,000. I'm getting messages from people on TikTok that I used to teach saying, oh, well done. I've seen you on my For You page. And I'm going, what's that then? Because <laughs> I didn't even know what the For You page was. I didn't have a clue. I think by lunchtime it had done a million. By the end of the day, it had done three three point four million views or something. And I'm thinking, oh, this is a total craziness. You know, it's just gone viral. I didn't really know what viral meant, but um, so yeah, so that's how that all came about. 
And then I put out, I think, the hotel ones. Both them went viral. Um, I did a Nirvana one, that one. And just like all of us, and I know it was exactly 100 days from the point of going viral, first of all, to hitting 1 million followers. One month after that Queen cover went viral on TikTok, John made his very first Instagram account in October of 2022. And his handle was simply old gray guitarist. Riding off of all of this momentum, John decided one day on a total whim to submit an application to be on America's Got Talent. Probably was watching the telly or I might have been in bed. I, I don't know when I did it, if I'm honest. A few weeks after signing up, John had completely forgotten that he signed up in the first place. And he was sitting there expecting an email from someone, wondering where that email was, when he thought to himself, maybe that email went to my spam folder. So he went into his spam folder, he's looking for the email and sees this email from America's Got Talent. And he thought to himself, I don't know, this is probably spam. But then he remembered that he had put in an application to be on the show. And he's looking through his inbox, opens it up and realizes this email is not spam. And they're interested in talking with John and having him on the show. You know, that could well have, that would have gone after 30 days. I would have known nothing about it. John immediately went to Julie and had to tell her that he had signed up for the show in the first place. I come home and I just, I said, you're never going to believe this. And she just looked at me and went, what? Huh? <laughs> Initially, Julie wasn't going to go with him, but after the producers called John and said, we would love to have your wife come too, John went to Julie and said, well, what do you think? Do you want to come onto the show with me? That was literally two weeks before, and I think I woke up, because of the eight-hour time difference with LA, I wake up in the morning picking up the, the emails, obviously, from uh, my producer, and it was like, we'd really like your wife to come. Oh, blooming heck. So then I'm ringing her, she's walking into the hospital, and I said, um, it's like this, they want you to come now. Um, you've got to get some time off in two weeks, which is really difficult with the NHS. And you can't tell them why. <laughs> oh, no. And luckily, they did. They, She's worked 37 years. So, you know, it's like, look, I can't say why, but please, can I have like a few days off? And they said, well, why? No, well, I can't tell you. Uh -huh. I'll let you know later. So it was one of those. So luckily, they did. And, you know, it was great to obviously go with it. So. So the two of them packed up their bags and headed to sunny L.A. Little did John know, but what would happen next would catapult him into the network of some of the world's greatest, most well-known guitarists. His audition began with him asking the judges if they could hear him. The judges at that time were Howie Mandel, Heidi Klum, Sofia Vergara, and Simon Cowell. They all kind of looked at each other and chuckled because this old man is on stage holding a microphone saying, Hello, can you hear me? Finally, Heidi looked at him and answered and said, yes, we can hear you. She said, how old are you and where are you from? And John said, I'm 59 years old and I'm from the south coast of the UK. Heidi followed up and said, what do you do for a living? John revealed he used to be an electrician, but that he had been teaching music for the last 20 years. The audition began with one big buzz from a Fender Twin Reverb amp, which my father believes was pre-CBS, but we cannot confirm that. <laughs> this big buzz kind of shook the audience and left everyone wondering where this audition was really going to go. But as soon as John launched into We Will Rock You by Queen, the entire audience was shook for an entirely different reason. They were on their feet and in shock that this kind of music was coming out of this unsuspecting 59-year-old man. After the first few riffs, the entire audience was on their feet cheering for John. And whether you were a practicing guitarist or not, whether you knew who Queen was or not, whether you liked guitar at all or not, you couldn't help but sit there and be in complete awe of the absolute shredding that John Wines was doing on this stage, not missing a beat. Simon Cowell even broke character for a moment and started clapping and smiling. And for the first time in a long time, America was blessed with an old school rock and roll style guitar show. Way overdue, in my opinion. We need way more musical acts where the guitarist is the center of the stage, in my opinion. We need more Stevie Ray Vaughan's. We need more Jeff Beck's. And here he was delivering this to us, John Wines. 
After one or two minutes into the performance, people thought it might be over when John then launched into the sickest guitar solo ever. Howie Mandel actually called John Wines at the end of this, quote, old man Halen due to his very Halen-esque style playing. Sofia Vergara literally had her jaw on the floor and when the audition was over, she laughed and said to him, you didn't even know if you could be a music teacher. Did you ever think that you could be a rock and roll star? And tears just came to John's eyes. It was a very overwhelming moment. I feel like the producers try to make moments like this happen quite often, and they try to force a story or force a moment. But this was a very real, raw moment of a man who is just really good at guitar coming on stage and realizing he is a straight up rock star. Even Simon Cowell was dumbfounded at the end, and all he could say was, quote, well... I did not expect that. The only bad part about John's audition on this show was that it was only a few minutes long. John continued to play on the show, and then once his time was over, he immediately took to social media to let his fans know what laid ahead. Hi guys, so just a quick update. Uh, we're just waiting to be picked up, ready to go to the airport to go home, the long journey home. Obviously, as everybody probably knows by now, the AGT journey is now over. Uh, am I disappointed I'm not going through? Yeah, a little bit, I wouldn't be human if I wouldn't. Um, but you know, I never expected to get to the auditions, let alone to the, the live semi-finals. So, you know, hey, I'm, I'm up on the deal and I do you know what I mean. And the first thing I must say is thank you to everybody that's that's um, we've met. That's for sure. And everybody who voted for me, um, thank you so much, you know, and all the comments, thanks for that. Um, that's kind of lifted me. If I'm honest, and you know I'm always honest, um, I wish my performance was a bit better. You know, you play a hundred times perfectly in rehearsals as soon as you go on that stage. It went a little bit wrong. <sighs> Maybe I'm my own worst critic, I don't know. But uh, there was one part that was, yeah, mm, damn. Um, you know, but it's live. So, you know, things happen live and they're always going to go wrong at the worst point possible time but again thanks to everybody for all the support it's it's been great and um we're just going back to normal now i'm now just to let you know i'm now going to start concentrating on getting this band together i already did a lot of work before we left so hopefully that's going to come together quite quickly now so that you know i mean i don't know what's going to come out of this guys um i really don't um there's many ways it can go uh, hopefully some collaborations would be really cool. Um, and, uh, you know, hopefully some some uh, some function gigs and some gigs, you know, once I get this band together. So that, that'd be really good. But uh, like I said, I'll be back to making the normal videos and uh, keep your suggestions coming in. That'd be great. And, uh, and again, thanks to everybody for your support. OK, so... Uh, uh, and also thanks to uh, all, the, all the producers and that and, and the music team at AGT, they were great. You know, um, it's been it's been a, it's been a blast, as they say. OK, uh, I'll catch you soon, guys. Cheers. Bye. At this point, he had over a million followers on social media all over the world, and they were all rooting for John, whether it was rooting for him on stage at America's Got Talent or rooting for him back home in the UK to keep on showing up for them in whatever way he could, whether that be online, on YouTube, on TikTok. People just did not want John to go away. After returning home to the UK, there was definitely, I think, probably an adjustment period trying to go back home, back to the North normalcy of what he had been doing, but John's life was far from normal after this. He was now a full-on celebrity. Hi guys, so I hope everybody has a great night tonight. We're in Madeira at the moment. I've actually just been recognized by some locals, um, which I didn't expect, and I doubt if they expected to see me here. When we started our Zoom call interview, John actually told me he was waiting on a new camera to arrive because he is about to launch a full-on course. The course is going to start with the basics. If you have never picked up a guitar before, you would start with the beginner episodes of the course, but it is going to bring you all the way through up to John's intermediate status. So whether you're a beginner or if you are a very seasoned professional guitarist, there is still something that you can get from this this course. I'm collating gear at the moment because I'm just about to start a proper course. It will be a paid for course. The first one's going to be complete beginners. So I'm going to have sort of maybe 30, 40 videos online. 
that you know if you already know how to hold a guitar you don't need to look at that one we can split things down um, and it's all being shot in 4k i'm not sure where we're going to host it at the moment but it will be like i say this is actually like a one-off payment it won't be that expensive it's well it's it's going to be certainly less i think than three hours tuition with me one-on-one -on -one, and you'll get hours and hours and hours of it and, and i'm trying to see of a way that i can make it interactive if i can so more to come on that as soon as i have information about it i will post it also if you don't follow my instagram follow me over on roots music history i post all sorts of updates and little you know tidbits over there too but everyone is very excited about this course because to learn from john wines is to learn from one of the best if you haven't watched his videos definitely set aside like three or four hours to binge watch because once I start watching him, whether it be on TikTok or Instagram, I cannot stop. I literally need an intervention. My dog starts pawing at me. She thinks I'm not okay. I'm in this like John hypnosis. If you watch his videos and compare it to Van Halen or Randy Rhodes or Gary Moore, he's right there. He is right there, not missing a Eat. It is so much fun to watch. One of the comments on his videos literally said, quote, Van Halen is my number one. You are my number two. And while John absolutely loves to play and loves to post music, his passion really lies in teaching and in teaching the next generation or even the current generation. You are never too old to pick up a guitar, but his passion lies in teaching people the craft of the guitar, making sure that this craft does not go away. One of the biggest things that John wants to stress to any young person learning the guitar is to build a relationship with your local music store please you need it's not buying a washing machine when you want a guitar you ha and I always tell the kids please don't go to the the online people that don't know anything about music and we're not going to mention any names okay and go to a music store because you can try it out the neck profiles change so much you need even if you can't play you just need to hold it to see if it feels comfortable do it just do it you know buy you know if you can locally have a relationship with your local music store um and and yeah it's just the way to do it and and hopefully um there may be some things coming up where I'm, i might be doing some clinics i'm hoping in store things that you know we can encourage people to to go to a music store and play and i think especially in this day and age so many young boys are playing video games or they're on their phones, on social media, looking at other people's lives when what we really need them to do is put down the screens and learn the guitar. <laughs> I want every young boy to learn how to shoot a gun and to learn how to play the guitar. <laughs> For the youth learning from John, John is so much more than just a music teacher. He is their mentor and he is giving them lessons that they will carry through their entire lives. But one thing that John has done with social media is really turned it around into being something productive. You know, if you're gonna be on social media, you might as well be learning something. And watching John's videos, you cannot watch a single video without learning something new or learning some new technique that you haven't tried before. And John does not just use social media to post cover songs. He uses the platform to connect with his fans throughout the world. He has several giveaways that he's done on his channels. He just had a giveaway in February and I think the winner was in Finland or Switzerland, which is so cool to be connecting with people in Switzerland and Finland and America and the UK and everywhere. He has brought together the Guitar Network virtually in a way that we have never seen done. Guitar Daddies Unite. <laughs> in addition to being on social media and teaching five days a week in person and launching his new course, John also has a band that he has put together called the Old Grey Guitarist Band. They just had their debut show about two weeks ago in the UK, but it is so much fun to see him going out there and playing live. The Old Grey Guitarist Band also has an Instagram page that I will be linking in the description down below. Go ahead and give them a follow. The keyboardist who plays with them quite often is actually a former student of John's, which is really fun. I think that what is so special about John is not only his incredible talent, but the fact that he is just so full of life. He gives inspiration to everyone. A young student who is just picking up the guitar for the first time will look at John and say, I wanna be like him when I'm older. 
older. Even more so, he is such an inspiration for adults. It is so common where someone might play the guitar in their early 20s or 30s or teens, and then they might go away from it. You know, you have to pay the bills, you have to get a job, you have to have a career, you have to bring in money somehow. And a lot of people do move away from that and then pivot into a full-time career. And then when they retire or get laid off or, you know, something happens, especially if it's due to their age, a lot of people sit there thinking, you know, what do I do now? But John is sitting here shredding the guitar at 60 years old. And he is proving to people who are also over 50, over 60, that you can still pick it up again. You can still have this hobby. It's something that you can bring back to life if you've put it away for a while. And he has also brought attention to the possibilities that exist in the digital world. You can order a camera and start a YouTube channel or start a TikTok, start an Instagram. Well, I know TikTok is very controversial right now, but you know what I'm saying. You can order a camera tomorrow and start posting on any platform that you choose and the possibilities are endless. And his love for music and for life is so contagious. I wanna give a very special thank you to John Wines for sitting down and talking with me for over an hour. We had the best conversation. It was the best way to start my Saturday with our cups of coffee and just talking about music. That's my happy place. I just wanna to touch on one more thing because yes. you had mentioned you're open to collaborations. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyone who is interested in collaborating with John Wines can reach him at theoldgrayguitarist at gmail.com. That's gray with an E, not an A. Or you can send him a direct message on social media as well. And again, if you would like a Divine Music Intervention mug, I will link the store to buy those in the description down below. It is a separate store from the Roots Music History General Merchandise Store. The general merchandise store is automatically linked. So once you pull up the video and you see all the Roots merchandise, that's the general store. But the Divine Music Intervention mugs are a limited edition mug and it is sold separately through a Shopify store. Also, don't forget to subscribe and hit the thumbs up button. You have no idea how much it helps the channel just to have one extra subscriber or one extra thumbs up. And I also want to say thank you so much. I am forever grateful every time someone gives me a super thanks. A super thanks is a button at the bottom of the play bar that allows you to donate any amount of money that you would like to the channel. Your donations are imperative to keeping this channel alive. It helps me pay for all of the subscriptions that I need in order to get my old newspapers, in order to get information. Also, whenever I interview someone like John Wines, I pay a premium to have the recording and the transcript and all of my subscriptions add up to quite a bit actually and your donations are imperative to keep this channel going. So if you have ever given me a super thanks or if you would like to give a super thanks on this specific video, I would be forever grateful. Thank you so much for your support. And of course, I will see you on the next Roots Rockumentary. Home, home, I need a little taste of home.